Yeah. Folks, I don't care about the background noise today. TV's on. I don't give a shit. Miami Hurricanes just found a way to give their damn season away with a 42 to 38 loss at Syracuse. I didn't do a video last week after Miami won 42 to 14 over Wake Forest because I didn't want to say anything to potentially, you know, jinx what I thought was maybe a defense that finally decided to show up. But no, the defense that has been here all year showed up again today at the worst time. Miami led 21-0. 21-0. Miami led 21 to nothing early in the second quarter and found a way to blow this game. Complete domination for the first 18 minutes. And then watch this defense completely implode again. Completely implode again. 21 nothing comes back. Syracuse makes it 21 14 before the half. Ties the game at 21 on their first possession in 39 seconds. Miami takes the lead back 28 21. Syracuse right back down the field again. Watching Miami's defensive backs play, by the way, I haven't even introduced the end for the show because I'm so irritated. Uh, the, the season's blown, the season's washed, the season's done. It, it, it'd be highly unlikely to watch the college football playoff committee put Miami in the in the tournament. It be because of what it is. They haven't had a big win per se. They don't have a ranked win per se. Because the ACC is completely undervalued as a conference. Syracuse is not a bad team. Syracuse is a really good team. And that's why I was afraid of this game. Kyle McCord threw the ball all over the field. Syracuse has been throwing the ball all over the field all season. <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is Miami's defense is just so unbelievably bad. This team lost to Boston College, 37-31. This team lost to Pitt, 41-13. That was getting them court through five picks. They lost to Stanford. So Syracuse, but Syracuse does have a win over Georgia Tech. Syracuse has a win over UNLV, ranked at the time. So Syracuse has a win over Virginia Tech by seven. They got a win over NC State. They have offense. They have skill. They have skilled players. And today we saw skilled players completely fucking embarrass Miami's atrocious defensive backs. Whether it's Jaden Harris, Damari Brown, O.J. Frederick or Daryl Porter, watching those four defensive backs get absolutely embarrassed for the entire game is just, it's old and tired. It's been going on all season long. Those guys can't cover anything. They're horrible. And I hate calling guys horrible, but God, those guys are awful. They don't jam at the line. They get beat off the line every time. They can't cover basic slants. They can't tackle. They don't make plays. They're, it's like watching flag football with those guys on the field. Frederick smiling after he gets burnt for burnt for a holding a pass interference that would have had a fourth down and forced a field goal. Over and over and over again, the whole game. Daryl Porter gets thrown around like a like a rag doll by Syracuse receivers. And Mario Cristobal, back to his normal ways. Cam Ward goes for 349, two touchdowns. Damian Martinez goes for 10 carries, 84 yards, a touchdown. Xavier Restrepo had an otherwise great game, except for, got to say what it was, his fumble, bluntly, don't want to say it cost Miami the game because the defense had a lot to do with that, but it was a 28-28 game, and Restrepo has a first down, and he fumbles the ball, and they return it for a touchdown. And that changed the game. Miami did come back to tie at 35. And, of course, Miami's defense immediately gave up a touchdown to make it 42 to 35. Miami has the ball down at the George at the, at the Syracuse with eight-yard line on first down. And goes back to that stupid shit turd screen pass, as usual, rather than handing the ball to Damian Martinez, who gets four yards pretty much every time he touches the ball. And then what happens? <clears throat> Jacoby George becomes Jacoby George again, committing a personal foul after the after the whistle, after the play's dead, 
So now instead of it being second and goal from the eight, it's now second and goal from the 23. Thank you, Jacoby George. Thank you. You didn't learn last year to not be a fucking asshole. You didn't learn last year to grow the fuck up. How many dumbass personal foul punishments does your dumbass have to commit before you learn that you cost your team games with stupid acts like that, selfish acts like that? You needed to headbutt the Syracuse defensive player. You needed to do that. By the way, folks, this is Rudy's rant. Proud to come on now the podcast. We talk facts and feelings. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'm I'm sick of watching Mario Cristobal walk around with his look like a chicken with his head cut off, blowing timeouts because their team is unprepared, not being ready for a team that throws the ball. As Syracuse throws the fucking ball the whole game. And then completely unprepared for defense. You need to make a stop. And you find a way immediately to give up chunk plays. And look, I'll tell you this. I had zero problem kicking a field goal with four minutes to go. You know what I had a problem with? I had a problem with how long it took. I had a problem with how long it took to kick the field goal. That field goal should have been kicked with four minutes to go. Instead, we just burning off clock. And we kick it with 342 left. But I had no problem with kicking a field goal there. None. No issues whatsoever with that. Cam Ward played an otherwise really, really good game, although at times his too cool for school attitude can drive you crazy. Instead of just taking off and running the ball, he he's playing around too much. He has a big run and he falls down on purpose. Just rather than getting even that last play on third and goal from the things like the 15. He could have scored on that play, but he was trying to throw the ball. Instead of, the, the, the lane was there. Go. Go get it. And if he just takes off, I think he potentially scores, or if not, gets really close to scoring. And then you have a real decision to make. At, at fourth and goal from the 10, you kick a field goal. It's amazing. Cristobal learned that this week because he should have done that against Georgia Tech. If he had done that, Miami would be 11-1 and one right now and still going to the ACC championship. So now Miami has to worry about other teams losing. Ohio State loses. And I'm going to keep this in perspective now because I'm going to sit here and tell you what I believe. Miami does not belong in the college football playoff. But there are a lot of teams that don't belong in the college football playoff based on merit. Ohio State just lost to a 5-5 five and five team. A mediocre dumpster fire of a program right now this year. Michigan sucks this year. Or six and five team, whatever they are. There were four touch, there were three and a half touchdown favorites. Three and a half touchdown favorites. And they lost on their home field 13 10 to a team that can't score, that literally cannot score. <clears throat> so Michigan's, Ohio State's now, I'm sorry, Michigan's now seven and five. Ohio State's now 10 and two with losses to Oregon. And Michigan. Now Ohio State does not get to go to the Big Twelve, Big Ten championship. Instead, it'll be Penn State. Presuming they won today, I think they were like thirty-one seven. So I presume they won. But you just lost to Michigan, who had no quarterback on your home field as a three touchdown favorite. Three touchdown favorite, you guys were. So what's going to happen with Ohio State? They'll probably get gifted a spot because they're Ohio State. Then you look at the next game, Georgia yesterday. Georgia beats Georgia Tech 44-42 in eight overtimes, a game in which I watched the referees just simply give that game to Georgia. To, to Georgia. Just give it to them. Clear fumble inside the five-yard line is, is not called a fumble, and that ends up in the, being a score for Georgia. A pass interference in the end zone that wasn't a pass interference. That was a fourth down play. Ball would have flipped hands. A fumble by Haynes King, which came back to obviously destroy Georgia Tech because Georgia ends up scoring after they recover the fumble with the 30. But a clear targeting penalty that wasn't called because, you know, it's Georgia. Helmet was straight down. He hit Haynes King straight in the jaw, and Haynes King fumbled. And it wasn't even looked at for targeting. 
because it's Georgia. Because you got to get all these SEC teams in there. It's 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 got to be that way. But Georgia Tech, Miami lost two by five at Georgia Tech. This was at Georgia. Georgia Tech was up seventeen in this game. Fourteen with seven minutes to go. Georgia has not been a world beater this year. Tennessee does beat Vanderbilt, so they're safe. Clemson is 12, and they lose to South Carolina at home. And what does Clemson get for it? A fucking gift to play in the ACC championship game. It's complete horseshit. Is Miami better than Clemson? Absolutely. Is Miami better than, than Syracuse? Yes, absolutely. They lost it, but they're better. Are they better than Georgia Tech? Yes, they're better. Is Miami the best team in the ACC or the second best team besides SMU? Yes. They're first, they're one of the they're one of the two best teams. But you can't lose 42 to 38 when you know you win, you get to the ACC championship. If Miami had gotten to the ACC championship, forget about winning it. Just get there. Even if they lose, they'd have made the they would have made the tournament. They would have made the playoff. Because they're they would have gone in ranked in the top four. And SMU is a good team. And you know that SMU is not going to keep them from scoring. So now we have no ACC game to go to. You have to hope that SMU beats Clemson. You need SMU to beat Clemson because SMU is going to end up in that tournament one way or the other, in my opinion, win or lose. So Penn State did win, so they are now going to the Big 12, Big 10 championship. Notre Dame beats USC by 14 on the road, so they're, they're going to be safely in since they never have to play a conference championship game. Um, Alabama wins. So, you know, they're gonna find a way to get Alabama in there. Arizona state wins big. So they're going to their conference title game. Who's left. There's a few games left tonight. So BYU plays Houston at 10, 15. If BYU wins, they'll be playing Arizona state for the big 12 championship tonight. You still got Texas and Texas A&M. And I do believe if Texas A&M wins, that actually gets them into the conference championship, I believe, if I am not mistaken. Yes, if Texas A&M wins, I believe Texas A&M ends up in the conference championship over Texas. But then Texas will find a way to put Texas in. It's a mess. It is a mess right now. But Miami had one job to do, and that was win today. One job. And now you're relying on stuff to happen to somehow get Miami to squeak in as an 11 or a 12. Because I have a feeling they're going to drop it in the top 12 rankings-wise. I, I, it just it's, it's, a, it's a disastrous end to a season to lose two of your last three games. <clears throat> All these other teams that lost, lost early. They lose early. I'm arguing for Ohio State, and Ohio State gets gifts. Yeah, so BYU wins tonight. BYU is going to play Arizona State for the conference championship, as they're probably going to win. Colorado, Colorado did win yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at these standings right here. It's amazing. Ohio State had themselves in the Big Ten championship after beating Indiana, and now they're actually going to finish behind Indiana in the conference standings. Ain't that some shit. But people are going to question if Indiana should go to the, go to the playoff. Where is what's left? SEC here. If the yeah, if okay, this is weird. Tennessee's tie with Georgia. There'll be a three-way tie. If there's a four-way tie, I, okay, I, I stand correct. I don't know who, who goes. If there's a four-way tie with Georgia, Tennessee, Texas A and M, and Texas, who the hell goes? I, I Texas has to be out because Texas lost to Georgia. Texas A and M. Lost to Notre Dame, South Carolina, and Auburn. That Auburn game is going to call. Is going to come back to haunt them. <clears throat> and who's what did Tennessee do? Tennessee won today. They lost to Arkansas and Georgia. I don't know how it works out. I don't know how. Maybe it ends up being Georgia versus Tennessee. Maybe it ends up being Georgia versus Tennessee. But yeah, I want to see Texas A&M win tonight. I want to see Texas A&M pull off the upset. They're at home. I would love to see Miami get to the CFP, but I, I, I don't. You didn't earn it. You didn't earn it. I don't think a lot of these teams earned anything. A lot of these, a lot of these teams are not very good. But you're gonna see when 
the rankings come out, that Miami will still have a better record than at least the same or a better record than Ohio State, Georgia, Tennessee. Um, Clemson, Bama, Ole Miss, South Carolina. I, we'll see what happens, man. I know they say it's 40% now. I'm not counting on it because they had a chance to do their job the day and they didn't do their job. And that's on Mario Cristobal and his coaching staff and those, these players who clearly at times look like they've never played football before on that defensive side. It's a very disappointing end to a season. I don't care about the bowl game, if there's a bowl game. Yes, I'd love to see them get to the CFP. We'll see what happens, but way to blow it, Miami. Good job. That's all I got. Fuck out of here. Facts over feelings.